Super Idol the Charo They'll make me do ten by each one for the Yo I saved this video just to record my reaction to it, man. Act man made a black myth Wukong. Man, there's so much gaming shit going on. I didn't even like I don't think I ever made a video on Star Wars Outlaws, man. I, I <laughs> shit. <laughs> shit. Alright, let's see what he gotta say. What is he? I, I played um about five hours of Wukong already. So yeah, I I got a little bit of um some complaints, right? You know, I, I want to see if it aligns with him. Warning, the previous version of this video was taken down because it contained misinformation. The following huh. new version contains copious amounts of IGN article. How Black Myth Wukong developers history of sexism is com- Proceed with See, I didn't even pay any of that shit any mind. I didn't do any videos on that fucking shit. I, I'm just tired of it, bruh. I'm just I, I mean, we already we already know this, this is a bunch caution. of BS and stuff. You were discretion is advised. What's up, everybody? This is the Act Man here, and today it's time to reject modernity and embrace monkey. Return the monkey. One of the most anticipated games of 2024 just released, Black Myth Wukong, and yeah. in just a few days. It already has overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam and a peak player count of 2.4 million. Insane. Black Myth Wukong has already taken the record for the second highest peak player count. This motherfucker right here. Oh my gosh, this nigga was so fucking annoying. Holy shit. That little invisible fish or like wind, whatever the fuck type of chop. Oh my gosh. So fucking annoying. Anyways. Of any game in Steam's 20 year history. Folks, I think it's safe Crazy. to say people are going bananas. I mean, this is some real monkey business. Literally, monkey business. And you know who's sweating right now? Donkey Kong. And, and let me just say, the DK stocks are plummeting. Now, I've invited a special guest on today to give their input on this game. Everybody, please welcome Frieza. How are you doing? I can't. I can't. No, I can't watch this. I can't watch this. I can't. I can't. It was already bad enough. I was in like maybe thirty seconds into the game, and I I, I just felt some type of way, man. I, ooh, I was about to throw hands in that. I was about to beat that mother. You know the the dude in the opening. He looks like ghetto, bro. The the dude from JJK. He says monkey too. I was just like, yo, I just can't escape this shit. I can't, bro. Oh my gosh. To that. Nasty monkeys. The whole barrel of monkeys. Okay. Yeah. You know. Monkey see, monkey do. Uh, that's great. I'm, Catch uh, did you want to? Monkey round and Look, I round. The monkey I get goes. You're <laughs> nothing but an oh, open monkey. Cut his mic off. <laughs> oh, thank God. What I think Frieza wanted to say, and what I've heard Yo. many Chinese scholars point out, is that Black Myth Wukong is nothing but a cheap ripoff of Dragon Ball, and I couldn't agree more. Think about it. Dragon Ball is a completely original story about a monkey boy named Goku who wields a magic staff and rides a magic cloud on his journey to the west. And we're supposed to believe Black Myth Wukong just came up with all of that on their own? I think he's making a joke. This is like a like a original story, I think, you know. Journey to the west type shit. An old, old Chinese lore. Um, right, and I'm sure they didn't plagiarize Donkey's favorite champion in League of Legends either. What a disgrace. <laughs> yeah. Track, Black Myth Wukong is turning out to be a... Yeah, I guess all three of them are from, um, yeah, that story. Massive W for China. And it's fitting that one of the most popular and important literary works in the world, and especially East Asia, is all... This motherfucker. Oh my gosh, he's the hardest. He's so... Well, and I mean, I think I killed him less than 10 tries, you know? I mean, it's nothing compared to, you know, a Dark Souls game, like, fucking, I don't know, like, Elden Ring or some shit. I died, like, 50 times or some shit. But this nigga, oh my gosh, bro. It's actually insane how cracked he is. It, it, it didn't even make any fucking sense with the fucking... I'm, I'm gonna let the, play, I'm gonna let the video play. I'm gonna let it play. One of the most popular games in the world. Fuck Whether him. Whether they're being forced to play it or not, it seems China is really enjoying this game. 
because when it's nighttime for them, player counts have dropped from 2.2 million to 247,000. And in any other instance on Steam charts, this would be a massive red flag. I don't think there's ever been like this radical of a disparity between the high and low of a Steam game, but it's not an indication that the game is dying, of course, just where many of the players are coming from. Like how Witcher 3 became a vessel to share the rich Polish and Slavic Ooh. mythology with the world, China is sharing their mythology with Black Myth Wukong. And although I'll be making my fair share of China-related jokes in this video, know that it's all done in good fun. Please don't report me to the- Oh, Lord. I can only imagine. I think I know what he's about to do. Chinese government. Okay, my social credit score cannot take this. There you go. Now comes the part where I double-cross you. Because it turns out there is a real problem with Black Myth Wukong. And I'm here to tell you all about it. Despite being one of the few Chinese games that isn't sharing the Chinese culture of microtransactions and free-to-play garbage... Yeah, Black that's actually pretty damn rare. Myth Wukong isn't diverse enough. It lacks inclusivity. According to this... Oh, yeah. Inclusivity. I mean, what, what else do you want? They got, like, every fucking animal in the game. Like, holy shit. Screen rant review of the game. Wait a second. What else do you need? We got fucking mermaids and shit. Like, what the fuck? Hold it. Pro. Great diversity in items and mechanics. Con. Lacking in inclusivity and diversity. Which... Which one is it? So, these two could just cancel each other out and make this a 4 out of 5 review, right? Yeah. Logic. It's my greatest weapon. A lot of people have really taken issue with this. Okay, I don't know how bad it's gonna be. My dad is like playing a loud ass fucking video game, so <laughs> we're just gonna bear with it. We're just gonna bear with it. I'm not doing this video again. I ain't editing this shit either. Fuck it. This article just deal with it. Screen Rant actually had to remove the name of the writer because of targeted harassment. And I'm Damn. just as shocked as you. Really? Harassment in the gaming community? When has that ever happened? Now, if you're making fun of an article you disagree with, Good for you. If you're going out of your way to harass the person who wrote it, you're fucking cringe. Uh, make me cringe. cringe. <laughs> By the way, yes, I'm going to criticize and make fun of this section of the article. And I also want to point out that the rest of it is clearly written from a perspective of an actual game critique. The entire article isn't just talking about women are in this monkey game, me mad. <laughs> But it is worth pointing out, we, you know, nuance isn't a bad thing, people. Speaking of nuance, I think the reason people are reacting so negatively to this review in particular is because it seems to be part of a broader initiative from game journalists to paint this foreign group of developers as sexist misogynists. So yep. the writer is certainly doing themselves no favors by running along and parroting unproven narratives. But we're gonna- Honestly, when it comes to, like, games and shit now, Man, I, I don't care how the shit's made. I don't care who the fuck make. Well, maybe, you know, like EA, you be so hesitant. But anyways, I mean, besides that, like, I, I don't really give a shit about any of that little outside shit. I, I don't care about all the outside forces. I don't give a shit. Just give me the fucking game. I'm going to play it. And if it's good, it's good. If it's bad, it's bad. You know, I'm not playing a shitty fucking game. I, I care about the game. What's in the game? I don't <laughs> fucking shit. If it's good, it's good. And I'll enjoy it. It's bad, it's bad. I don't care what fucking influences uh, they want to put political shit in there, fine, whatever. But it better be fucking good, or else, you know, type shit. I'm gonna read the spice. Like I, I don't, I, I'm just tired of this shit, man. I don't give a shit anymore. Do whatever the fuck you want. If you do the right thing, you'll get money. If you don't, you're gonna lose all your fucking money. You're gonna lose your studio. Part. While my analysis and review of Black Myth Wukong remain focused on gameplay, it's important to mention the controversy surrounding the game's studio and the reports of misogyny and sexism from developers. It is important to point these things out because if they're ignored for too long, well, eventually we end up with a picture like this. For those- oh, Holy it, shit. This is the Cosby Suite at Blizzard. And if you don't know exactly what it is, well, you can probably figure it out. Yeah. However, as a media outlet who received an early copy of a highly anticipated $60 video game, your job with your review is to help consumers make informed decisions on what games they should purchase. The company's internal misogyny and sexism, like you can mention that if it exists, 
and you can ask questions about whether you think it's ethical or not to support this company and purchase the game. What you can't do is come up with some flimsy reasoning connecting a non-existent lack of diversity to the words and actions of the employees in order to label the game itself as sexist and misogynistic. The article continues, True. as far as chapters one and two, while characters are clearly fictitious and fantastical creatures, there were no female or feminine NPCs, enemies, or bosses present. That's right, fellas. Can you- Who cares? You believe this giant blue homunculus doesn't have a vagina? <laughs> it ain't so, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. As far so as upsetting. the first two chapters, you know what? Maybe I was wrong giving this article the benefit of the doubt because what the fuck is that nonsense? So you're taking points off of this review because of a lack of diversity and inclusivity only in the first two chapters. <laughs> what? I'm retarded. Believe it or not, there are female characters in Black Myth Wukong. They're just not in the first two chapters. Seven out of 10, too many monkeys. Do you need a constant barrage of female and token characters to classify a game as diverse? And if it doesn't, then you dock points for that? Would it soothe your angered spirits if the frog boss had huge riveting boobies? You see, one of the real problems with Black Dog. Myth Wukong is something that's become- The NFL season will be oh my before you know gosh. it. Yeah, NFL Sunday Jesus. ticket and YouTube TV. And Come more prevalent in the last few years. But this is what I'm talking about. All this extra bullshit. I, I don't- I don't care if there's a woman in the game or not. I, I, I really don't. If the game, I just care if the game is good. Shit. We just fighting bosses and shit. They don't gotta be female and they don't gotta be male. They can be all female. Shit. I wouldn't care. I like, I, I don't. This is, this is just fucking stupid, bro. Like, oh my gosh, man. Holy shit. Like, it's illegal not to have like a certain gender or like a certain race in a, a game. So I'm just, <laughs> dog, I'm tired in general. Like, I, I need to take a nap. <laughs> so I'm just, bro, I, I'm just like, I'm yapping, bro. I'm spazzing out. I'm about to crash out, the man. The rampant spread of misinformation across social media and game journalists who refuse to review games on their own merits and instead insert their own arbitrary merits to then judge it based on that. The article <laughs> goes on, the lack of diversity and inclusivity resonates with the misogynistic comments reported to have been made by developers, which express disdain for women playing their games. Although Black Myth Wukong does have truly enjoyable moments, the underlying feeling that women aren't welcome in this world felt present throughout my Ooh, gameplay what? experience. And see that? That is where you lost people, because there's no real argument to make, as far as I've played, that Black Myth Wukong lacks diversity and inclusivity Stop, in this isn't a game that Damn women can enjoy or him. play. The product itself does not reflect that reality. You know, at a certain point, you have to stop letting the outside world change or affect your review score. You saw this with Hogwarts Legacy, remember? People were not playing or yep. reviewing the game based on its own merits, but based on what J.K. Rowling had said that they disagreed with. And to be quite honest, I'm still disappointed that Hogwarts Legacy wasn't about keeping those uppity Jews in their place. <laughs> but life goes on. For example, listen, <laughs> Yo. internal fiascos around Nancy Drew and the mystery of the stolen breast milk didn't make Overwatch 2 any worse of a game. It was already dog shit to begin with, so yeah. you know you couldn't have dug the grave much deeper. But yeah. any self-respecting game critic would not lower their review score of Overwatch 2 the game based on the internal drama at Blizzard, the company. But unless you can point to these internal issues with a studio and its culture and its workplace environment and tie that to some kind of negative impact on the game, the final product, then that shouldn't affect your review of the product. Because the truth is that most consumers just want to keep consuming. But I was curious about the claims. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't give a fuck about any of that sh I mean, like, even with the- I mean, it's fucked up, you know? Like, the- the fucking Bill Cosby shit, but I- I- shit, I'm just here to play the fucking video game. God damn, I don't- Shit, all that other extra shit, I mean, you know, I- I don't give a shit, don't affect me. Um, uh, I mean, you know, some shit tra tragic and shit, you know? Um, and if they are real bad people, yeah, fire them and shit, but, uh, I'm just here to play the game. I'm just here to play the game, my boy. ...of sexism and misogyny, and I wanted to investigate these claims to see if they had any merit behind them. 
And I stumbled upon this lengthy IGN article from a year ago. Jesus. Game Science is the studio behind Black Myth Wukong. And there was a post from one of the co-founders where back in 2020, he shared his thoughts after watching the pre-alpha trailer for Black Myth Wukong. Now, I don't speak or read Chinese, so I'm going to take IGN's word that these are accurate translations of the developers' Probably comments. Probably shouldn't. After all, IGN is one of the largest gaming news outlets in the world, and they are held to a high journalistic standard to accurately portray the truth and go about writing articles such as these in good faith. <laughs> you stupid. <laughs> so there's certainly no way they could get away with posting misinformation <laughs> in today's society. Misinformation that might fool unsuspecting gamers Nasty like me who ass. might be willing to give them the benefit of the doubt. And look at that. There's no editor's note, so no corrections needed. What I'm about to read is factual inaccurate it's not it's not but we're gonna we know we know anyway for for the memes now keep in mind this is what ign thought one of the co-founders of game science said i want to expand my circle and hire more people get licked until i can't get an erection <laughs> you what ladies and gentlemen i don't think i've read a better epitaph do you want both of these things at the same time <laughs> crass jokes aside he describes his disappointment in the trailer. Rough decisions were made. The sound was terribly disjointed. The frame rates of a hundred thousand heavenly soldiers have dropped so hard that they have caused. What? Oh my fuck! God damn it, act man! Fuck! God damn it! Oh lord! Yeah, but I I I heard about that fucking um IGN doing a shitty translation or, or fucking line, whatever the fuck they were doing. That there was no way. There was no way that was true. That, that, you know, uh-uh. PTSD. -uh. I know you just happen to be a little depressed. It is my honor to provide you with some comfort in the lower half of your body. Now, <laughs> fellas, let's be real for a moment. If you have a girlfriend or a wife, I want you to show them these quotes and ask them if they'd feel comfortable doing a one-on-one -on -one job interview with this guy. No. If you are getting up to ask your significant other this question, then you have failed the test. Because the answer is no, I would not feel comfortable. <laughs> and thankfully, nobody should feel uncomfortable except for the hacks at IGN who posted these mistranslated quotes. I still read them though, because I thought they were funny. But in the previous yeah. version of this video, I thought they were legit. Now, based on several comments I've seen, it would appear these quotes fall under the category of idiom. Something that might seem nonsensical or rude when approached with a Western mindset. Also, like mm. I said, there's no editor's note on this article, but the writer who wrote it put one on a separate article that was written by somebody else. And it what? doesn't take any accountability at all. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> well, that's great. You see, usually when you post something false or misleading, you take it down or correct it. I suppose one lesson of the day is that if you're going to post an expose article that relies on quotes from a different language, a language you don't understand, uh, maybe it's worth trying to track down one of the two billion Chinese people to help verify those quotes. I know, right? Like, what the fuck? God damn, it's not that hard. Holy shit. That's actually, like, fucking... Like, what? why? They just put it in MTL, machine translate. Like, what? That's... That's... Oh, my gosh. I, I hope bro got fired. I hope bro got fired, because what the fuck? But we're not out of the woods yet, because there was one other controversy, one huge, massive problem surrounding Black Myth Wukong. You see, a document of guidelines was sent out to content creators who were given early access to the game. I was not one of them, but it contained a list of do's and don'ts when it comes to streaming or making early access content about the game. And I'm just as shocked as you are. You're telling me China is trying to control what people say? Or don't say? I don't believe it. Oh wait, my mistake. It's it's actually the do's and the don'ts. Sorry, they, they put an apostrophe there. Given how we just learned about IGN's huh. fuck-ups and mistranslations, it's entirely possible these guidelines are poorly translated too. I mean, though, with Marvel Rivals, they, um, they tried to tell streamers what to do and not say, you know, it's not really a you know, Chinese thing. Well, they're trying to make it like really, really, you know, yeah. And since the developers have been targeted by disingenuous claims from IGN, I can understand why some of these don'ts were included, since they want to promote the game instead of the manufactured outrage surrounding it. We're still going to read them and make fun of them, though. But these are as follows. Goose, enjoy the game. Well, 
Now I can't because dues is clearly pluralized and there's only one do. Dots. Well, do shit. Insult other influencers or players. Okay, yeah, I'm okay. fine with that. What's the big deal? Yeah. Do not use any offensive language or humor. Urge to be racist. Rising. What do you mean offensive? What words like fuck and shit and shitting? Di yeah, yeah, yeah. What? What's? What you mean by that? Nipples, dear Wait, sir what? or madam who typed this up and sent it out to content creators, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I live in America, therefore your censorship is invalid. Cope and seethe. Yes. Hey, God bless America in the chat. Hoorah! Thank you. Do Hoorah! not include politics, violence, nudity, feminist propaganda, fetishization, and other content that instigates negative discourse. Well, I don't know about you guys, but this year I'm definitely voting for Obama. I think he's really gonna build the wall this time. Did you happen to catch that clip of the guy who got killed by a thousand ton anvil? It just, it just splattered him all over the pavement. It was, it was crazy. Oh yeah, do you guys know of any porn websites that are like more pro-feminist or take a more pro-feminist approach? I've, I've really tried taking it upon myself to stop man-spreading and, you know, be an ally. But then again, I could just rule 34, my favorite character. I like to jork it too, the covetous demon. And with that all said, uh -huh. ladies and gentlemen, I gotta be honest, I really don't like Black Myth Wukong. I'm proud of myself for hitting all of those. Oh, and here's the big one. <laughs> Well done. Well done, holy fucking shit. Do not use trigger words such as quarantine or isolation. Or why? Oh, wait. Yeah, that's why. Okay. I'm going to say it. I can't help myself. I have to say it. I'm going to meet water picks, send oh Sonic, complete care. You can have the number one God damn recommended it. water God damn it. I'm going to say it. I'm gonna say it. Looks like the Tiananmen Square Massacre and Winnie the Pooh are back on the menu, boys. On a more serious note, I have to ask, in what con- Well, this video is not being shown in China, that's for sure. On text, would COVID-19 come up in a Black Myth Wukong movie? Yeah, like hey, what? Boss, this Black Myth Wukong game is freaking sweet. It reminds me of the time I spent two weeks in quarantine and isolation during the COVID-19 pandemic. <laughs> I think stuff like this just invokes the Streisand effect, especially with Americans. Like, if you tell us not to do something, we're going to do, do it, it twice as much. We're, hey, yeah. Act man, don't review Red Dead Redemption 2. Fucking bet. And finally, do not discuss content related to China's game industry policies, opinions, news, etc. Well, folks, it's been fun getting blacklisted from all of China. As Sergeant Johnson once said, send me out with a bang. And I think this was Damn. a bang. But now that I'm done making my jokes, uh, let me give you my first right, impressions B. of Black Myth Wukong. That's right. Yeah, we're actually going to talk about the gameplay now. It's been described as... Yeah, we, we pretty much on uh, the video almost... <laughs> But anyways, nah, nah, what he was doing, holy shit. Uh, I, I kind of, like, skimmed over, like, some of the news and shit. Like, I didn't really pay attention, so this is, like, a good refresher, low-key. Especially because I didn't really, like, make any other, like, videos on Black Myth Wukong in terms of, like, the shit going on and all the controversies and shit. It's just ter it's tiring, bro. I don't got time for that bullshit. As a Souls-like, would it be more accurate to call it a Sekiro-like? Because it focuses solely on one weapon type. Yeah, motherfuckers are getting mad, like, of people saying it, like, being a Souls-like. But it kind of, kind of is low-key, kind of like a Souls-like. Um, more so when he, he says Sekiro, so like, yeah, that's that's probably the best way to say it. If you're going Souls-like, just say Sekiro, bro. Don't don't piss these Souls-like motherfuckers, these Dark Souls niggas off. Because, holy shit, I don't know why they're getting so mad at it. It's like a combo of like Souls like and like God of War pretty much. Right. But the competition they get they so get mad to play a variety of supplementary skills, transformations, and power ups. So that you don't feel like this one weapon is all that you have. Now I've only played a few It hours, is, but yeah. But I've gotten that itch to like not work on this video and instead play more of it which is always a good sign because i got adhd and boy do i get distracted this sort of action adventure style game with rpg mechanics and stat increases sprinkled throughout is going to be instantly familiar the mechanics themselves are not particularly challenging to get accustomed to which is nice it kind of tears down the barrier for entry uh, and it keeps the pace of the game moving along nicely then the first two hours i think i fought like five or six bosses and they've all been fun decently challenging and not like a i want to throw my controller and break my arm again kind of frustrating 
No, he's showing that same boss over and over again. How far did he get? Well, he showed some clips from, like, you know, parts I didn't get to. I just made it to um chapter two or whatever the fuck it is out of, like, five. So uh, That was, like, four hours in, low-key. Four or five hours I played. He's throwing the same motherfucker. That main motherfucker made me pissed, bro. Not really. It's just, like, I mean, I got him less than ten times, you know? Like, I think, like, maybe seven, I think, in total. Um, but it, it's just a way, it, it reminded me of Shadow of the Earth Tree and like some bullshit moves and shit these fucking bosses were doing. The bosses I've seen so far are- But they're not bad, they're actually like pretty easy, it's not as bad as like a Souls game. Very creative, there's a giant wolf and it jumps around on the rooftops and buildings and I always think it's cool when the environment becomes part of the fight, where it doesn't feel like you're just static in a flat environment and nothing changes. As far as I've played, there's been a pretty substantial amount of variety with the bosses and enemies, and it keeps the game refreshing. Well, my favorite thing about Black Myth Wukong, it's a martial artist kind of thing. We now have two incredible staff wielders in video games. Keelik has been carrying the torch for far too long. Seriously though, the staff as basic of a weapon as it might appear, is actually one of the weapons that has endless possibilities in terms of creative move sets. And that is 100% here in Black Myth Wukong, which as a martial artist who's trained with this weapon, I can deeply appreciate that. You know, with Sekiro, we had the katana, and now we have the staff. And I think both of these games prove that the Souls-like genre can be focused on one singular weapon and just adding a bunch of different moves and upgrades and different skills to it. Not only are a lot of the moves authentic, as in like, this is stuff you would actually do if you were fighting someone with a staff, but the moveset is enhanced with the more fantastical elements of the setting, which by the way, is absolutely gorgeous. I haven't mm -hmm. seen graphics this good since I played Donkey Kong Country at Mel Gibson's house. For all the what jokes the and shit posts. Nah, not on my PC. Well, it's fine on my PC. Like I, I'm used to like shitty graphics. I've been playing old games lately, you know, cause um. Modern gaming has been a little dog shit the past, like, seven, eight years. But so I'm kind of used to it. But I, I think I got to turn up my... I, I switched the settings, bro. I, sw I swear I switched the settings. But it's just... It looks like somebody eating my boy's hair off, you know? Like, little, little pieces of fucking... Like, fucking pieces in his hair or some shit. I gotta switch that shit. No, I got a, like, up-to-date fucking PC. I just got this shit, like, last year, so... But no, it's on, it's on my end. I'm terrible. This is why I play fucking console, bro. I only got it on PC. I only get games on PC when it's not on Xbox. And this is like the second or third time a game is not on Xbox because the Series S is it like optimized for fucking Black Myth Wukong yet because it's a shitty fucking console in Xbox. Okay, let, now I'm going in a whole other thing I've been doing. I let me stop. really think this is an environment a setting and a type of culture a lot of American and Western audiences haven't really been immersed in before. And let me just tell you, game science, they make a fucking statement. In combat, you can swap between different stances to do things like power pull extend, which lets you hop on the pole of I love that shit. before countering with your own. That's a pretty cool mechanic. And I'm excited to unlock more abilities and see what kind of crazy combos I can put together. And that's a good instinct in my brain when I'm like, I'm excited to play more of this. I wish I didn't have a job. The coolest part of Wukong Same. is that, yes, you can transform into a frog. Pack it up, boys. Jesus. So from here. The transformations are really cool. I've only unlocked licky, two of licky. them. And you get new moves. You can even upgrade these transformations to unlock new abilities. The music also Oh, I hate this nigga right here. I hate him, bro. I, dude, I fuck with this energy. You can freeze enemies him, in bro. their tracks, rack up damage with quick attacks before finishing off your combo with a hard-hitting power attack. Wukong can summon his classic after-image clones. So in conclusion, as far as first impressions go, pretty dang good. The game is $60, and that might be a bit steep for some people. There's no guarantee if it'll go on sale, though it is getting... That's the, that's the price we want. That's the, no, that's what a, a game should cost. It, it, that's what it should cost. Shit. What are you talking about, Act Man? This is, especially for this type of game, god damn. <laughs> Should be sixty. Should be fifty dollars. To be honest, can okay, we get back to fifty dollar games, bro? Some very positive review scores from both critics and users. By the way, no extra monetization outside of a deluxe edition, which that's always a plus. If Ubisoft, yeah, you see this shit. Take notes, please. So, what all did we learn today? Well, if you're going to use IGN as a reference in the future. 
fucking double check everything they say. Learn yeah. from my mistakes. Because if they're willing to engage in bad faith journalism, not correct it or take it down, then people have every right to be skeptical of any news stories or anything they post in the- Hey, yo, that monster energy drink, I was just staring at it. I got that shit. I got that. I drink that shit at work. That shit's pretty fire. Future. Because Tastes pretty around damn Black good. Myth Wukong, they failed to do their job of accurately informing the public. I think this game is going to be a historic yeah. title for China. Well, they do it on purpose, low-key. Like I said, although I've talked shit and cracked some jokes, I honestly hope they continue pushing for these types of quality games moving forward. So well done. But what do you think? Do you trust the Chinese government's estimates on the number of deaths in the Tiananmen Square massacre? Yo. Is it in the hundreds or the thousands? Well, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Like the video. Maybe you thousands. And yeah, I think thousands. The censored man for more awesome content. All right, everyone. That's all I got for today. This is the act man signing out. This nigga is not going to get a review because. Peace. That he's yeah, he, he's done for that guy. That company never gonna fucking get him, bro. Uh, shit. The right monkey in the wrong place can make all the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, people angry that this game has no gay characters, but in fact is one you the player. <laughs> As when we're at the end of chapter five, I feel included in the only important group. People enjoying the game. <laughs> Yo. We're breaking new grounds for cursed thumbnails. Yeah, that shit was actually when I looked at the thumbnail, that was pretty crazy. Uh I think that's yeah. I told my non gamer girlfriend about the sexist drama and the only thing she replied was it's a game about monkey. What the fuck? People need and that's what I'm saying. Like I mean there's barely any humans at all in general. And we, we don't we don't even need fucking humans in this fucking type of game, bro. It's all about monkey. We want monkey, it's all about monkey, but anyways, on a real note, um, I'm surprised he didn't talk about, like, uh, well, I guess because he, well, he made this, like, yesterday. He posted it, like, yesterday. He didn't get too far into the game, either, from the looks of it. He's pretty much on track with me, bro, like, just finishing the first chapter. I think he did less than that. I don't think he went to, like, the, the last Boston uh, chapter one. But, yeah, uh, so far, I mean, the game is good for me in general. Um, from reviews and shit, from what I've seen, and then also from my experience so far, it's like an 8 out of 10 game, probably maybe an 8.5. Um, there are some issues and shit in terms of like bugs and then my game fucking crashing for no goddamn reason. I, I crashed literally right after the tutorial. I had to play that shit again. So I was thinking like end of chapter one and it was going into chapter two. I'm just like, please don't fucking crash. I have to kill that last fucking boss again because I got him in the first try when I had like one health left. But anyways... Yeah, I, I like the game. It's a pretty solid game. Got to play more of it to get a more um solid, I guess, like, review point. Review point and, like, review of it. You know, probably going to make a review of it in the future. It's pretty good. Uh, It's a solid game. Some people are like, it's hey, not going to get game of the year because you, the score for, like, all these critics and shit was, like, you know, not, not like a... You know, there's 9 out of 10s and shit, and maybe some 10s out of 10s and shit, but it's really like a like an 8 out of 10 type of game. They're like, a game this low, never got gaming. But I'm just like, well, Spider-Man, oh, Spider-Man did get like 8 out of 10. <laughs> but it was in the running. If, either, if Baldur's Gate didn't get it, it probably would have been Spider-Man, even though it was like kind of a mid-ish game, you know. I mean, it wasn't mid, it was above, but, like, it's kind of, like, the same, like, the other one. People were just, like, mad. Like, why is this, like, the same about the other one? It's like the other one. But whatever. I, I, I don't play PlayStation. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take it up with the PlayStation fanboy. That ain't my, ain't my genre, bro. Ain't my genre. But anyways, pretty solid, pretty solid video. Um, I guess we'll have a, another video out once he finishes the game, so we'll look at that. I thought this was like an actual like review review. He was just talking about the drama. He he was just talking about the drama. That's fine though, shit. But it just wasn't what I expected. But I mean, so far he likes the game. I think it's yeah, it's a pretty fair game. There's just a couple issues. I'll probably go in more into detail later in the future. But yeah, um, but it's not bad that you know it can't be game of the year type you know issues. You know, like fucking um. Dragon's Dogma 2. I still didn't make my review on that, but, you know, we'll see, man. We'll see. I'm just lazy as shit, man. But I... Peace.
Started a black man and took his shoes. Customized my AR like a Black Ops 2. Just scammed a white kid out of some Gorilla Glue. I don't want to fuck this bitch. She smell like poo-poo.